Buenas and good morning. Ilihesa Turnguahan is back in session after recess. We are awaiting a quorum and we are going to be resolving, we are going to immediately resolve into Committee of the Whole. We have been informed that the representatives from BBMR and DOA will not be here until 9.30. So we're gonna recess and, uh, and then resolve into Committee of the Whole at 9.30.
Good morning. The Committee of the Whole is called to order. Materials for the Committee of the Whole are in the shared session Google Drive folder labeled 121222 Committee of the Whole. Proposed amendments must be submitted in writing to the clerk via email 36glsession at gmail.com. Amendments not in writing will be called out of order. Here are the rules of engagement. Three rounds for discussion. We'll have two rounds of questions for the panel with each senator allotted five minutes for questions, not including responses. Time to speak may not be yielded from more than one member to another. A member who yields that member's time on a question yields all of that member's time on that question and may not later speak even if all the time yielded was not used. After the completion of the two rounds of questions, panelists will be excused. Third round is for amendments or comments to speak on the bill. After we complete discussions of the bill, I'll allow the sponsor to close and we'll entertain a motion for the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole, followed by a motion to rise from the Committee of the Whole, at which time I'll report out the bill as recommended by the Committee of the Whole. We are now on Bill Number 358-36 COR, as amended by the Committee on General Government Operations, Appropriations and Housing, an act to authorize the extension of the Gas Tax Relief Act for another 180 calendar days and to authorize Imagahagan Guahan to spend up to no more than $5,157,000 from the general fund or fiscal year 2022 general fund revenues collected in excess of adopted levels to cover the financial impacts of the Gas Tax Relief Act. I now call upon the panel guests, if we can allow them into, into the session hall. Okay, I'd now call upon the Sergeant Arms to swear in the panel guests and for the panel guests to introduce themselves after they're sworn in. Under penalty of perjury, do you all affirm that any and all information you provide today, whether it be verbally, electronically, and in writing, be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Mr. Chair, Don you may proceed. Thank you, and uh, at this time, if the panel guests could introduce themselves. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Lester Carlson, BBMR. Good morning, Edward Byrne, Director of Administration. Good morning, Vince Ariola, Director, DPW. Okay, now I call upon the primary sponsor of the measure, Senator Joe San Augustine. You are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Bill 358, my colleagues, extends the waiver on excess taxes and surcharges on liquid fuel for another 180 days and gives our Magahaga up to 5157000 to cover the cost. The cost of gas has a huge impact on all of us. The last round of gas tax relief did lower the cost of fuel for a while, and extending it for another six months will give our residents a break during the holidays and the beginning of the, of the new year. During the public hearing, we got written support from ExxonMobil that they will lower the cost of gas per gallon should this tax break go into effect. And since all the gas companies mirror their prices, we look forward to seeing all those numbers drop or continue to drop as soon as this bill becomes law. We also got support from the Guam Regional Transit Authority, the Department of Administration, the Bureau of Budget, and also from the Department of Public Works. I ask for the firm support of my colleagues on this legislation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator St. Augustine. Okay, we will begin round one of questions, starting with Senator Jim Moylan. No questions at this time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Moylan. Senator Duenas. Jesus Masi, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for the opportunity and for the panel for being here. Lester, I, I guess I'll go to you first. My, I guess maybe for an explanation, my understanding of the tax is that the tax is levied, but if the tax isn't levied, it's not collected. What is the purpose in this bill for the appropriation? Um, similar to uh, the measures that were passed in uh, Public Law 36105, um, we already have a budget. And in uh, 36105, um, Mr. Areola's um, department was uh, affected um, to the tune of about five million dollars. So we needed to be able to take what was appropriated to GRTA and uh, DPW to make up for that funding shortfall because we're not collecting the tax. So you're, you're absolutely correct. The budget was adopted and then subsequently through Public Law 36105, the general fund uh, was tapped to be able to, I think it's the exact same number, so that we could make DPW whole, but not from the Guam Highway Fund, but from the general fund. Similarly, uh, GRTA. So, given the fact that I believe Maybe I'll start this way. What, is, what was the amount allowable under the current Budget Act for transfer authority for the governor? For you're, we're operating under the assumption here on current fiscal year, right? This transfer is, will be done within this current fiscal year? Uh, yes, sir. And I'm actually trying to have my memory serve me, short-term memory and long-term is getting a little tough these days, I'm not sure why, but I think we may have reduced the transfer authority to somewhere around maybe 10%, maybe even lower, 5%, I'm not sure exactly. But the, yeah, uh, the, the bill contemplates uh, from the general fund or FY22 general fund revenues. Okay. I guess I'm trying to, is, maybe I, is there a fiscal note on this? I guess it should be. I'll just have you put it on the record. Do you believe that that money exists in terms of the funding source um, in, in, a, in accordance with the governor's authorized level of transfer authority? Um, I would prefer very, very, very much not to tap the transfer authority. Uh, we normally don't do that until the end of the fiscal year where we understand uh, what general fund um, shortfalls we have and what 
uh, lapses in some departments can be transferred over to meet those operational shortfalls. So it's too early to even consider the possibility of the governor's transfer. And, and that's what I was contemplating because essentially then, uh, because we would have uh, also kind of uh, maybe that anomaly section of your reporting requirements on the, under the CRER, right? Because you would have to contemplate then this as almost deemed appropriated and not wouldn't be tracking with your excesses. Um, that's correct, sir. Uh, like, um, we're not uh, taking money uh, away necessarily because the way that uh, the bill was written, um, it it basically uh, doesn't affect the budget. It basically it doesn't affect Mr. Ariola. It doesn't uh, affect GRTA. Um, it basically is looking at essentially unappropriated money and using that money. Okay. So I guess with that, uh, good morning, Vince. Welcome. Um, I would go to you and basically ask um, what, what are the list of projects or what particular funds are affected by um, that were budgeted by this um, tax relief being issued and of course not collected thereby, thereby requ requiring and requesting of the general fund now to subsidize those uh, projects into that amount that were being contemplated. What, what projects in specific are being anticipated here that need to be funded that were funded in the budget? Uh, thank you, Senator. Um, you know, we're, we're using an assortment of funds for, for projects, but uh, you know, of course, there's, there's road projects, there's village street projects. A lot of the projects also are, are um, um, heavy equipment purchases that, that we're, we're, we're in, in the process right now. The problem with that, Senator, is <clears throat> there's still a, a nationwide uh, shortage of, of heavy equipment, and we're looking at well over a year out. Uh, well, we've ordered these for almost a year now, um, so we're, you know, that's, that's a big holdup there. Um, but we've got a bunch of CIPs that we're doing out in the villages. Uh, uh, we're looking to do some CIPs within uh, DPW as well. That's going to cost quite a bit of money. Um, uh, the, the, the bus, um, the bus um, satellite stations that are out there, um, we'd, we'd like to get the, those, uh, those units up to speed. Um, there's, just, there's just a whole, mostly roads, and, and there's, there's not one giant project, so to speak, but there's a lot of little ones that, that add up quite a bit. And, and I ask this predominantly, or primarily, um, Vince, because I, I, I believe, and especially when we talked about this relief proposal, the general public, you know, believes and understands that this tax overall was designed to ensure that it would, um, you know, uh, account for non-routed roads, tertiary roads, interior roads. Um, and it sounds, just so that we understand this, it sounds to me like you're the the realization of this um, amount that was in your budget was basically more for general operations of, as you've discussed now mm -hmm. with DPW, and this is in totality a, an appropriation deficit for you now, not particularly that, you know, Momontotu uh, interior road was scheduled or something else was scheduled, and it's not, it, it, is, it is a variety of purchases and commitments that the DPW is engaging in. Go ahead, Lester. Uh, I, I, I read this different, sir. Okay. We're, we're not um, reducing the liquid fuel tax. We're just appropriating $5.1 million. This doesn't have any operational impact on this area, not like the other bill did. Yeah. This one here is $5 million in addition to cover specifically the continuation <coughs> of the what we would have collected uh, had we rolled back uh, the tax, but we're not rolling back the tax. So this doesn't affect anything in his FY23 budget. But this is allowing for the continuation of the non-collection of that tax. So we're now doing an appropriation whereby I, maybe I had it wrong, but I, I, I figured that when we reduce the tax and don't collect it, we just reduce the tax and don't collect it. That we're not rolling back the tax here, sir. 
We're not rolling back the tax. It was rolled back, and the impact is five point some million dollars. So we're appropriating. Oh, I'm sorry. On section one, you're right. It says authorization. Yeah, okay. this is a continuance. Yeah. yeah. So, so we're appropriating funds to account for money's not collected based on rolling back the tax. That's why I'm trying to figure out what are we making whole here? We, we must be making whole something that is a deficit based on an appropriation to Department of Public Works for projects that were anticipated and therefore we need to backfill this money. Because, you know, one of the things that I had contemplated in this, in this whole rollback and, and, and one of the arguments against it was, okay, now you're taking away from what this fund was intended for, which is secondary, tertiary mm -hmm. roads that are not covered by routed roads and the federal government and, the, and federal appropriations. And essentially, you know, you're, you're doing that and that's a bad thing to do just in the name of trying to save a few cents on the gallon of, or gallons of gas, you know, to, to provide relief. Now, my thought process was, well, we can always go back to the people of Guam and say, you know, in the future when things are more reasonable, you know, the economy has stabilized and we're talking about, you know, you need these roads, we need local appropriation. This is the general way that most jurisdictions find revenue for the purposes of, of dealing with road projects. But like I said, when I was talking to the director, he was coming across as this, this the fund in the totality of the budget funds a number of different things, capital improvement projects, equipment, heavy equipment, and, and the like. Mm -hmm. So I'm not opposed to an appropriation for the purposes of making public works whole, but I want to make sure it's on the record that we understand that this is basically restoring an appropriation to public works because the anticipated revenue from the tax coming in, got it, I'll close, uh, was, uh, I'll catch up on the second round, was, for the purposes of, uh, of roads, but obviously there's a number of different projects. I'll continue to listen, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I also apologize. I, I was going down to section two, glossed over section one, but you're actually right, so. Thank you, Senator Duenas. Before we continue, we've added one more member to the panel who has already been sworn in uh, by the Sergeant at Arms. Please, if you could introduce yourself for the record. Vanessa Valencia from OFB. Okay, and now we will continue, Senator Torres, Senator Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So in this bill, we are looking at, $5,175,000 from the general fund and or fiscal year 2022 general funds collected in excess adopted levels to cover the financial impacts of the gas tax relief act. So that was in accordance with the, uh, the bill or the public law that where we were giving gas tax relief. And so now we're seeing that we need an additional around $5.2 million to, for DPW. Um, my question is how much money of, or how much did DPW receive from the, um, the infrastructure law that was passed by the federal government. Remember back, way back we received about, yeah, the federal infrastructure law. How much money did DPW utilize from that? Can you push your button? <laughs> yeah, so in federal funds, yes, Senator, it was a little over 20 million. That DPW received? Mm -hmm. And what did DPW use that for? Oh, we are we are using it for, as I mentioned to uh, Senator Duenas, um, we're using it for for staffing. We're using it for equipment purchases. We're using it. Uh, we're bidding out um, road uh, maintenance. Uh, we're also bidding out um, heavy equipment rental. Um, we're going to be doing some CIPs uh, throughout the, the the some of the government buildings and throughout uh, DPW. Okay, and you said it was 20, 20 million? A little over 20. A little over 20 million, okay. So you said that right now that um, we're having a issue of acquiring equipment. And roads, I'm sorry, and paving of roads. Right. <laughs> Big one. Yeah, so you said that we're having an issue acquiring equipment. What, what exactly is that issue? 
it's but we're we're back the, the the suppliers are backlogged well over a year uh, for delivery of heavy equipment um, such as backhoes, um, tractor trailers, mowers. Uh, I think we've got a couple bulldozers that uh, we we've, we've ordered, and uh, a couple excavators that we've ordered as well. Okay, and this money has that money been already um, encumbered? Encumbered, yes, ma'am. Okay, and how much? In the backhoes, did you encumber for your product order? Of in in the where? I'm sorry. You said you you purchased backhoes, right? That are already encumbered, but there's a delay in in the correct, backhoes correct. coming in. How much did you spend? Oh gosh, I, I don't have that numbers uh, center, but it's it's a it's a several million. Like five million. I don't I don't think it's that much. I'd say three to four. Three to four. Okay, and then how about? Um, the dozers, the bulldozers. Dozers are about five hundred thousand a piece. How many did you order? Two. Okay, so that's one mil. Okay. Mr. Chair, can. Oh. Um. Okay, and how much did you invest in paving the roads? Oh. Boy, over the past year, the, well, over the last two years, um, you know, we were able actually to accelerate the village streets paving as well as the routed roads um, because, again, uh, because of our uh, contractor availability. Uh, I don't need to tell everyone here, there's only one contractor that paves roads here in Guam. But uh, uh, we were able to really accelerate a lot of the road projects. So uh, this past year, I don't have that number, but it's significant. It's probably... Let me just estimate maybe six or seven million just in the last year. And then how much are you projecting to utilize from that 20 million to pave additional roads? Oh, we're, we're, we should, you know, on, depending on contractor ava ava availability, if we could spend, you know, six to seven million a year, that would be great. And this is for non routed roads. Okay. There's a lot of roads that need paving out there. Yeah, so and flood control the, as well. So this is not the main highway road you're no, talking about? No, these are village streets. Okay, so right now you spent $7 million and you haven't sourced anything out for your anticipating, but you haven't had a contract out for this FY23 to spend. No, we, we do have a contract out for FY2023. As a matter of fact, we're, we're paving up in Jigo this week. And what's the cost of that? It, it varies on, on the different roads. Um, you know, a typical two-lane standard road for about a mile is going to cost about 800000 two-lane road. Okay. So then what happened to the appropriation in the FY23 budget for that additional $10 million? The 10 mil? Yep. We're, we're, we're using that as well. We're, we're using it. The word at DPW Center is spend the money. We haven't had money like this in, in ages. And so we are, we are spending as much as we can, we can as fast as we can. Um, some of the problem we've also had is w with, uh, with, uh, with personnel, you know, coming and going. It's, it's an employee's market out there. So we decided this, this year, um, and we let the bids out already, is to do a, mo a good majority of um, road maintenance, highway maintenance, grass cutting, um, we, we, we're, we put that out on bid, and uh, it hasn't closed yet, but we're looking to, to get that contracted out, as well as uh, heavy equipment rental. Okay. So, we'll, you know, we'll be doing both. We have our own equipment, and if, uh, you know, this, this past rainfall, the last four or five months, mm -hmm. really caught us uh, in a bind. Uh, we had some major floods that... Uh, we were able to attend to, we were unable to attend to, simply because of shortage of manpower and, uh, and equipment. Okay, do you have enough operators for the heavy equipment that you're purchasing? Uh, no, no. We, so we, are, we, are, we are bringing people up. Uh, we are working with uh, two entities to get them, uh, the folks with who we have, to get them trained and get them certified to, to be heavy equipment operators. Okay, so we're purchasing heavy equipment, but we don't have the operators for it. Right. Will they, will they, will you have enough operators by the time the heavy equipment comes in? That's, that's the plan. Uh, you know, uh, we're, we're, we know we're a year out. 
from uh, from receiving these equipment. Okay. Um, I don't know if Mr. Bernie can answer this or Lester. I'm a little bit concerned about the us covering this um, 5.2 million, the impact that it will have on the other um, <clears throat> other projects that we marked for excess funds from FY22 in the current FY23 budget law. Will this 5. Point, uh, I guess I'll just say 5.2 mil, okay. Will this 5.2 mil supersede that list? Will it impact that list? Will it take away the priority from the budget law that we have on the listed items that we um, set aside for the excess revenue? Uh, no, Senator, um, it won't. The um, consolidated revenue and expense report that we submitted um, for the month of September uh, on the third page basically shows everything that the body has passed um, from LEAP uh, and the uh, appropriation to uh, DPW and uh, GRTA for the gas relief and then the uh, nine other appropriations. Um, we still have a balance of um, $47 million, so it won't um, um, affect that if you appropriate from that fund source. You'll be down to like 42. What are we tracking for the unaudited excess funds for FY22? This is about as close as I can get you. Okay. Uh, we're still, Mr. Byrne is still collecting invoices um, and other obligations of the government um, for FY22 so that he can uh, start uh, interacting with the auditors. Okay, and um, is any of the, uh, Mr. Ariola, are any of, is any of the money from the infrastructure bill that you received, the 20 million, actually going in other, to other infrastructure projects, not just the roads, but as far as like sewage lines, um, power, underground power lines? Um, yeah, the sewer lines and power lines, we'll leave that to Waterworks and, and GPA. But uh, we are looking at some major flood control issues that we're having throughout the island. Um, uh, and these, these, these are long-term fixes where um, back in the day, say 10, 15 years ago, you know, throughout, going throughout the Santa Rita and Agate, especially in Maleso and Umatic, the southern villages, it just started out as just like little creeks, and now they're like major raging water rivers, and they're, they're, they're close to households. So we probably got eight, if not 10, uh, online right now that we're looking at. We're gonna be enlisting the help of uh, Army Corps of Engineers, right? This is, these, these, are, these are major, major projects that, uh, that we're, we're looking to uh, mitigate. Okay, thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chair, for now. Thank you, Senator Nelson. Speaker Talahi. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I want to thank my colleague uh, for her questions that were very relevant, I think. So, can you just confirm then when you talked about the infrastructure funds, that that's the 20 million? Those are the same? Right. And the 20 million, so that, then you gave us a list of what they're being used on, and you said roads up to the amount of 7 million. And are you also planning to use those infrastructure funds then for the 8 to 10 flooding projects? Depending, depending on the, the, the review, the assessment, and the cost. Uh, I don't know what these things are going to cost. As many as you can fund. Right. Do you have a budget that you can send to us, at, um, just so we'll know which, what, how you're allocating your $20 million on infrastructure funds? Of course, funds? of course. Thank you. And then um, the $10 million, you said you also took care of some flooding issues with that. That was a general fund appropriation? or in, I believe so, yes. In, uh, yeah. in the FY23 budget? Right. Yes, okay, and then, um, so you're, you've told us then that infrastructure funds, those federal infrastructure funds can be used on village roads and you are using them on yes, village yes. roads. Okay, that's yes. excellent news, great. All right, so I wanna confirm the, um, with the others. So the original bill said from any available funding source and the new 
amended bill says, from the general fund and or fiscal year 2022 general fund revenues collected in excess of adopted levels. And I just um, want to confirm, you went over the CRER, Mr. Carlson, and uh, you, um, you said that the FY23, do we have any change in our FY23 projected revenues versus what the process we went through during the budget? 23? Yes. Um, we're still tracking um, below on some special funds. The good news is that the um, amount allocated to GVB um, exceeded the monthly anticipated collection. Um, and we did something, um, the best information that we had when we came before you on Section 30, we had no inkling that there, uh, we had uh, an overpayment previously. So the amount that was adopted was something like 75 million, but we ended up getting like 74, 70,500,000. So there's a four point something million dollar shortfall. But when we gave you guys the uh, October uh, CRER, we actually took the entirety of that shortfall out of the equation uh, and we, uh, we still um, exceeded the monthly um, uh, collections anticipated by $7 million. Okay. All right. And, um, and as you said, we have appropriated all of our projected revenues for FY23 in the budget. Uh, yes, ma'am. And uh, you have accounted for all of the appropriations of FY22 excess in the Budget Act or any other laws, and you still come up with a balance of 47 million, meaning there's money available for this plus energy relief or energy credit, hopefully. Yes, ma'am. And other things, all right. And then um, did we, maybe Vanessa, you can answer this uh, from OFB. Did we expect the collection of this 5 million and did we appropriate it to DPW? Uh, yes, yeah, so we're trying to now give DPW five million more. So I'm asking, did we expect the collection of this five million in the liquid fuels taxes, and did we appropriate it to DPW when we did our budget? Based on our revenue projection for the Guam Highway Fund, um, we only factored the, the first, the Gas Relief T um, Act, the first one. So for the extension, we didn't. Okay. Um, and do. Um, so, Director Ariola, did DPW use the first five million that was appropriated for the first 180 days moratorium? Yes, ma'am, that was part of our operational budgeting. And fully used. Um, I don't have the end of the year um, numbers, but it, it was used. Yes, ma'am. All right, I guess, yeah, the question is, do you really need it to be appropriated if you've got the federal funds coming in and the other funds or, and were you able to use it in time, you know, well, knowing that you've got limits with your contractors and other things? Right. The, the way I understand this, this appropriation, it was, it was to make up for whatever was lost from Guam Highway Fund. So if we lost the 5.1 from Guam Highway, it would be supplanted by general fund. And again, it's for overall operations. Uh, the way I understood the, 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 the ARP funding, uh, and uh, and the, the 10 million appropriation in the in the budget act those were more for specific uh, projects infrastructure projects uh, roads uh, erosion control flood issues things of that nature okay um, <clears throat> DPW um, are you still meeting the road list that was uh, developed between you and the mayors, the village roads list, the priorities that the village mayors have set? Yes, yes. So sir. would you say you've, you've accomplished, like there were supposed to be three in each village, three from <laughs> right. the list for each right. mayor, and yeah. uh, did you accomplish that in fiscal year 22? What do you expect to accomplish in FY23? Thank you, Senator, uh, Speaker. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're still trying to go on that basis, but you know, there are some villages that are way larger than others. Um, 
you know, my, my good friend down in Malesso. Um, we probably just have one more road, if not two more roads down there. Uh, but like Jigo, I can count on a dozen roads. As a matter of fact, I was supposed to be at a meeting with the uh, Jigo mayor today just to discuss roads. But up north, uh, the, the roads are, and central as well, there's just so many roads on Guam that, that, that need help uh, being repaved and everything. So it's really just a matter of, of getting to them, getting the, getting the assessments done, uh, seeing what the utilization is uh, on, on the roads and, and their, their, their condition and their, their um, expected, uh, whatever the, the months or years they're expected to, to, to last. But, um, you know, and then of course, it's the availability of our, our contractor. Are the, yes, and it seems like you're saying you've been having more availability of the contractor lately? Yes, That's great. Yeah. So are the mayors, uh, do we have a schedule for FY23? Um, I have, we have it up to a probably about March, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. Okay, and can we get a copy of that? Or, sure. I know it fluctuates versus uh, emergencies or, right, emergency flooding or whatever other priorities come in, but right. a general schedule that the mayors can count on that their projects will be addressed? Yes. All right. Um, so, sorry, back to BBMR. Uh, so in your letter, November 29, 2022, in support of the bill, you said that um, the relief should come from FY22 general fund revenues collected in excess of adopted levels. So do we need the language in the amended bill that says general fund and or? the excess revenues? Uh, probably not, Senator, because um, <clears throat> there's sufficient wherewithal. In the excess. Yeah, so if, 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 we, if you guys were to strike out the uh, transfer authority because of the reasons I stated earlier and just leave it to this funding source that we provided to you guys in the uh, September CRER, which was given to you guys in October. Um, I think we're comfortable that we have the wherewithal to be able to do this. All right. Well, I prefer that, of course, because it's more precise and we know where the money's coming from and, and yeah. where and it's not coming from, we also know, hopefully. And if I may, add, uh, uh, since you said precise, um, I, I would also suggest that uh, the money not be. Um, it should, it should go specifically to the agencies that would have normally received the, the funding. So uh, five million to DPW and 157,000 to GRTA. Where, where's the last one? Yeah, no, because it doesn't, it doesn't actually tell. Uh, right, no, but what was the second one you said? The, to DPW and? GRTA. GRTA. Yeah, because the uh, mass transit. Yeah. Uh, so instead of an authorization, it should be an appropriation of these, the excess revenues, yeah. yes, to those agencies. It, it if, should be, because uh, if I'm not mistaken, an appropriation is, uh, uh, it, it basically gives us from soup to nuts the ability to do something. An authorization is just kind of like, you're authorized to do it, if you can figure out how to do it. I'd rather see the word. Uh, all right, so if we appropriate $5 million, is that a, um, are we appropriating an extra $5 million, or are, how do we just make up for the amount that we've already appropriated? Can we just get that language, perhaps, from OFB? Right, Vanessa, you know what I'm, I'm asking? So we've already appropriated this $5 million. We've accounted for it in revenues, but now if we pass this bill, we're not going to receive it. So can we, instead of double appropriating, the five million that we're not receiving, and then the five, another five million that we just uh, actually, yeah. Where should the appropriation go? Is I guess is the question. Is it is it to the agencies or to the fund or what? Mm -hmm. Anyways, I guess on round two, if we can think about that. All right, thank you, thank you to the panel, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Vanessa from OFB indicated she'll look into it and uh, get back to you with the answer on that. Senator Perez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning to the panel today. Um, so just a, maybe a question to OFB. So in the, the last budget bill, we, uh, we limited the continuing appropriations for lapsed funds. 
Uh, do we have an account of what was lapsed and what's available for appropriation? For the lapse funds, um, we actually don't have a listing of that right now, but um, once we have the information, we'll provide it to the body. But for, for the information, we don't have that right now. We're pretty much basing our, um, the excess revenue based on the CRER. As for the agencies, um, we have to go more in depth with that. Okay, so I'd like to pose that question to Director Byrne. Uh, do you have a, an account of um, lapsed funds that were not continually appropriated in the last budget bill? Senator, the, we're closing the financials for fiscal 22 um, actually on Friday. So we have to, as, as Mr. Carlson mentioned, we have to collect all the invoices um, and, and all the liabilities and all the obligations and post them to fiscal 22. The, the closing date, um, and all agencies know this because we've reiterated several times, the closing date is on Friday and we will post any remaining obligations that we haven't already been notified um, after we close on Friday. After that, you can determine what the, um, what the lapsed uh, funds are. And you can't really do it before because we haven't closed the financials. So is there any preliminary information at this time that you can share? No, we, we're still, uh, you know, the staff at DOA Accounting are working very hard, especially this week, to, and, and it's unfortunate that um, some agencies leave it to the last minute. And we've had actually some fairly large uh, invoices come through so I really would prefer to uh, wait until we've posted everything and will the legislature see that report well the, the, the result is the audited financials but the I, I believe mr. Carlson will prepare a um, I'll ask him to speak to that a, a statement of the um, of the lapse funding okay mr. Carlson uh, can you add to that statement please uh, thanks, Senator. Yeah, we normally provide that information to you uh, when we utilize the governor, governor's transfer authority. Uh, I think last year we gave you that letter, I want to say in February or March. Um, we needed to find out, as you mentioned, who lapsed and who overspent and then transfer monies from um, specifically for like public safety agencies. Uh, those are the perennial overspenders. So uh, we normally, I, I think last year we gave it to you in February, March. So it, it, it does take that long to be able to kind of let the dust settle. Because okay. I'm, I'm guessing that could be a potential source of funding. Is that correct? Yes, uh, but remember, that would be for 22. That's how come I'm averse to even considering the governor's transfer. Uh, we, we're closing the books in 22. Um, if we dispense with the two bills that would um, tap the uh, excess revenue, uh, hopefully that's the, the end of it because we're getting kind of close to the bottom of the barrel. But um, th I don't, I don't uh, view that as like uh, operational funds um, being a source to do it because we won't know till after the, essentially after the second extension of the, more, of the um, gas relief tax is over. So primarily the funding source for this would come from the excess unappropriated, the, the ones we collect over what we anticipate, is that correct? That's the most viable. I think everybody understands that it's there and the gas relief is really, really much appreciated. Okay, and in the fiscal note, it states that um, even after we deducted all of what we appropriated uh, that we assumed was over the collections, uh, there's an additional 47 million, uh, roughly 47 million, is that correct? Over what we deducted from uh, yeah, 2023 it's a, budget? It's the same information taken from the CRER. Okay, mm -hmm. and so that 47 million would cover shortfalls, right? There's a $6 million, an estimated over $6 million in shortfalls from the special funds. 
So yes. I'm just I'm just looking at your fiscal note. Yes, that's, that's what come after we dispense with uh, this bill and the uh, GPA relief. Uh, Mr. Byrne does need the flexibility to use uh, general fund money to cover special fund shortfalls. Okay, just to be clear, the fiscal note that you provided for this bill um, stated that there is 47 million available uh, without you know pass passage of the bill. Correct. So, which means that this 47 million is available to use. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And so some of that money would have to go to cover shortfalls in the special funds. Is that correct? Um, I think, uh, Senator, if I could just remind you that, yes, the, the general fund is required to, uh, under accounting principles, to make up any deficit in special funds, but it's not it's not simply the shortfall in, in revenues, because uh, if, if revenues fall short, then there is an attempt to reduce expenditures. So the net amount, the fund balance, the resultant fund balance, is what is, is the number that the general fund has to make up. And it's generally less uh, than the, the, uh, the shortfall in revenues because of the restriction on expenditures that was caused by the shortfall in revenues. Uh, again, you know, that would, we'll be better able to ascertain that when we've closed the financial statements. So if I'm hearing you correctly that uh, if a fund is underperforming, they may not necessarily get the, the coverage. Is that what I'm hearing? If a fund doesn't realize that, you know, because it's special funds, that's, this, this, is, doesn't, this is a different rule from, from the general fund. But for special rev I mean, special funds are actually called special revenue funds. So the source for those funds are the specific revenues that are set forth in law. And if those revenues fall short, then we certainly do attempt to um, restrict the expenditures uh, that are associated with those revenues because we, we simply don't have the cash. Okay. But uh, being that there is an excess, uh, ex we're expecting excess collections, um, is it DOA's, um, I guess, procedures to cover what was expected from these special funds? Is, but but what I'm hearing is that it may, you may or may not be doing that. We, we will be doing it only to the extent of the shortfall in the fund balance. Not, not the revenues. Okay, yeah, okay. All right, so just going back to this, uh, I was just doing accounting, um, considering that there is an expected 47 million uh, collections over what was predicted uh, after the passage of the budget, of the 2023 budget, uh, there's still funding, funding available for this particular bill. Yes, Mr. Carlson uh, just said yes, and I agree. Okay in addition to covering the shortfalls in special funds, as well as the, um, we're, you know, we're looking forward to another bill, 357, so that there's enough cushion there. Is that correct? Yes, that's what he just said, and I agree. Okay. Um, I think those are my questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator Perez. Senator Brown. Thank you very much, Mr. Sherman. I certainly appreciate uh, the information that's been provided so far. Um, obviously, if we, if we vote on this, we're going to sacrifice other funded projects that we would like to see. And certainly for DPW, you're never going to have enough of a budget anywhere near to address the demands out there on the road. And I think our people continue to see, well, we've certainly seen a lot of village road projects that have been addressed um, this past year. Uh, and certainly a tremendous benefit within the villages. but. There's still a lot of our main highways where the visibility, uh, even though the road may be still be in fairly good condition, the visibility because of the like of, you know, restriping, replacement of the reflectors, um, is getting more and more difficult to do, even if the best of your ability to see is still very challenging. So, I mean, if we do this, it's obviously gonna be the sacrifice. You're gonna be able to get your $5 million, but it's gonna be a sacrifice to other things. And while, you know, we keep hearing about all the wonderful revenues that continue to come in, I mean, are we looking at that heading into 2023, 2024 in terms of our revenues? Um, you know, we see the continued decrease of 
uh, money going into our special funds that you mentioned earlier will have to be covered. But that to me is also a very good trend of activity on Guam because that money generally is uh, generated here. Uh, it's not coming in, you know, from, from federal sources for the most part. So either BBMR or, or DOA, what are you looking at? Because, you know, the, the party's not going to last forever. You know, Christmas will end and the new year will start and we'll be back to the reality that most of us are new to in the grind that we never have enough revenue to cover all the desired uh, obligations in the government, including the growth of government that has occurred over the last couple of years. So can either one of you respond to that? Uh, thank you, Senator Brown. Um, once I got my head screwed on right, because I didn't have it screwed on right when I was talking to Senator Duenas, um, we are not going to be collecting the equivalent of $5 million from um, a different variety of uh, liquid fuel taxes. But we are going to make uh, Mr. Ariola's department whole as well as GRT. It doesn't say that in the bill and I'm sure uh, you guys will fix that because um, whatever it is that we did the last time was very specific. Um, you would probably need to reduce the amount of $12 million. $12,404,709 from the Guam Highway Fund uh, by five million dollars and replace it with general fund money so you'd have to make a revision to Mr. Ariola's current budget but we're not uh, we're not losing anything with respect to funding we're replacing it and giving people relief so I I, I think we're okay yes and I, I think that's nice as well but and, and I, I can see I mean it's a small benefit to actually uh, what it's going to affect us at the pumps. It's good to see that the prices are going down. How long that will last, we don't know. Um, but, you know, at some point, the party is going to end. And, and that's where the challenge is going to be, because I'm sure there are many other issues of appropriation that we need. Uh, I hope this upcoming term, a lot more focus will be put into law enforcement, even more so. Uh, just community uh, concerns that are out there. I mean, the list goes on. Wait till we have to get to the other schools the many other schools besides Simon Sanchez that are in dire need. Now, you know, we've let, heard more and more in the last few months about the maintenance um, and the age of some of these schools and the cost it's going to take to address it. And, you know, we can do the um, partnership and, and uh, have private companies come in and build these schools and we do the lease back and yet, you know, the amount of money that adds to the annual obligation of the government is quite considerable. Another 15, 20 million a year off the table, uh, you know, this growth will level off and it'll decline. And that's the concern we have. I mean, it, it's, I think we can all appreciate anything we can do to offset uh, the impact to our community at this time, just because we are seeing such incredible price increases, just a basic uh, commodities, the power bill, I mean, the list goes on. Um, but I think we need to anticipate that the money and how do we prepare for that so that we can make sure the most basic needs of our government, our obligations are met. But I do want to ask, um, Director of DPW, you did elaborate, but what are your primary, besides equipment, what are your primary projects that you're going to be able to fund this year from this uh, additional, you know, the money, not the additional, but, but you know, in making you whole uh, to have this money given to you from the general fund, what, what primary projects are you looking at addressing this year with those funds? Thank you very much, Senator. Um, you know, in addition, the street, village street paving is right up there on the high priority list. And, and thank you for the, you know, we have the $10 million appropriation. We have some of the federal funding, uh, uh, ARP funding. So that really helps out a lot. Uh, but what we've, uh, what, what's come to my attention uh, just over the last, like I said, probably six, if not seven months, uh, uh, are, are two major issues. And, and these are flood and erosion control issues that are down in Santa Rita, Agate, uh, Yamatic, and Meleso. Uh, and then uh, we also have a lot of us, um, not soil erosion, um, shore, shore protection, such as Nimitz Beach, um, East Agania, um, a lot of the beaches down south. Uh, they, they've lost a lot of, uh, a lot of landowners, uh, have, have lost portions of their beach just due to the, the natural wave action. Uh, and so we're, we're looking at that. That's, we're, it's going to cost a lot of money. It, it, we're, they're, they're, uh, assessments are being done, designs are being done, but uh, I, I, I shudder to think what that, that final bill is going to look like 
but you know, I think if we can just just attack it uh, one at a time, uh, depending on that priority, um, you know, like like shore revetment, I can tell you right now, Nimitz Beach is is probably one of the top priorities because we've lost, God, I'd probably maybe 50 feet of, of Nimitz Beach it, that included maybe two, if not three, pavilions that are they're in the water now, uh, and they've been in there for probably the last three, if not four years, maybe n more. I just don't know. But shore protection is going to be a huge issue here, um, and uh, that, that's that's going to be up uh, right up there. Uh, and and the problem with that, it's very costly. You know, yes. it's not like we can go out there and put in a new road, right? Uh, uh, pave a new road, things of that nature. Uh, shore protection is going to be really expensive. Um, but I, at least I appreciate that. But on your highway projects that would have higher impact on most of the community, what keep road besides second? We're in the secondary roads. What, what is your, how much of that will be spent and where? How are you pri prioritizing that? So You, you know, I, I, like I mentioned earlier, I think if we, if we spend uh, anywhere from seven to $8 million on, on village streets, uh, and, and the, only, the, um, the only reason why I'm, I'm limiting it to seven or eight million is really contractor availability. Uh, you know, he's, that contractor, he's, he's in, uh, inside the fence, he's outside the fence, but uh, you know, if, if, if he, we had more availability, we could probably ramp that up in terms of village street paving. But right now it looks like we're, you know, seven to eight million dollars, that, that gets us some pretty good uh, village street uh, road paving. As I mentioned earlier, are you looking at doing any restriping? I don't know if DPW itself anymore does any restriping. Yes, ma'am. Your employees are also able to do that thermoplastic restriping and reflectors because there are many key areas you know, it's going to be a while even before you get around to it. But the roads are still in fairly good shape. It's just the lack of visibility on the lanes. You just can't see it. A little bit of rain. You know, it's a moonlit night exactly. and you're driving yes, on the road even with your headlights. I mean, it, it, you know, those are safety hazards. And those things can be very easily remedied. Right. Uh, with restriping and, and replacement of reflectors only last, what, five or six years on average to begin with. So are any of those main areas, Harmon, Timuning, I mean, any of those things um, you might be looking at in the near future we, to we address just finished, those concerns? <laughs> we just finished Route 4, mm -hmm. uh, where we already gave notice to proceed to do Route 8. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be done. And then after Route 8, we're going to go down to Sumai from like uh, PD all the way down to Naval Station uh, because that, that is, there's zero stripes there. Uh, again, depending on, on manpower availability and or uh, you know, hopefully the rain stop and we don't get called away to all the floods. Uh, we we can do some in-house striping, albeit temporary, right? So we can uh, we're looking to do probably Route 16 and maybe portions of Marine Drive from Dedido up to Jigo. You know, and and you're exactly right. If we can do some temporary striping that'll last four to five years, that's great. Yeah. Well, I certainly look forward to that. It'd be nice to see those. I mean, again, they they can be easily remedied. It's just like I realize. You have limited resources that you have to distribute island-wide, but I think some of those key areas would make a difference just for the volume of traffic that you have going through. Thank you. Thank you Thank for your you. response, Thank you, Senator. Mr. Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Brown. Senator Tidewey. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning to the panel. Thank you for being here. Um, you know, I'm just going to ask Vince. I, I know you can't see me from, from back there. We're kind of blocked, but I just wanted to hear for you again on the record the um, Infrastructure and Jobs Act is what we were talking about, this funding that, that you received, the $20 million, is that true? Right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. During a public hearing we had on some other bills, and we brought up the infrastructure bill, it was stated in your testimony that the Infrastructure uh, Jobs Act funding um, of 90, I think it was like uh, $19 million for the next five years, um, was all supposed to go to routed roads. And now you're saying that it's been changed. It's now being allowed to be used on non-routed roads. No, I, 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 if if you're talking about what I previous previously mentioned at a say a previous public hearing, I think we were back then we were talking about the FHWA funding, which is strictly for routed roads, for the most part. But I'm I'm talking yeah, but I'm talking about the infrastructure infrastructure and jobs act. Uh, the one, but what are you talking about? Because <laughs> are there two different fundings? Is that what you're saying? Because, yes, yes. Okay, well, everyone that says infrastructure, you know, funding, they're anticipating that it's the Infrastructure Jobs Act Fund, right, which right. gives Guam Highway um, 
or not Guam Highway, but DPW or works with our highway and all the, but they're routed roads and that's only 97, I think, $97 million for the next five years. So that's about $19 million a year uh, that you'll be receiving. So now you're saying that all that funding coming in from the infrastru Infrastructure and Jobs Act money is strictly for routed roads? No, 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 no. Okay, mm -mm. It, it, okay that's what I want to clarify. Our federal highway grant of about 16, it, it, it's going to increase like about six to 700,000 each year for the next five years. Uh, right now we get about $16 million a year. It's a federal grant for FHWA. But it's uh, not the Infrastructure Jobs Act. Right? Yeah, no, that's separate. Okay, that is totally separate. Totally separate, yes ma'am. Okay, ma so then the Infrastructure Jobs Act, have you received any of that funding yet? If we've, we've got the funding for that. That's, that's earmarked for, as I mentioned, um, you know, village streets, um, okay, you're, you're infrastructure. When you say village streets, because according to your testimony during a public hearing that we had, you, and we were talking about the Infrastructure Jobs Act funding, the 97 or let me get the, because I, I have it here uh, exactly how much it was like, 19. Give me one second. Um, okay, it's, it's here, repair and rebuild our roads and bridges and focus on climate change mitigation, resilience, equality. Okay, it's $95 million that, will be, uh, that has been awarded through the highway uh, program through the Territorial Highway Program, Guam will expect to receive $95 million over five years to rebuild roads and bridges. That's the Infrastructure Jobs Act that, that went out. And my question again is, is this money being allowed to be used on non-routed roads? Because when you came to testify at a public hearing, mm -hmm. um, this was the, the first time we talked about the uh, tax, gas tax release. You said that we could not use this infrastructure jobs act funding on non-routed roads. It's strictly for routed roads. Right. Is that still true to form? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Did you, so when are you receiving the first 19 million? from the Infrastructure Jobs Act fund, because it says for the next five years you'll be receiving, you know. Uh, you know, Senator, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to check on that, that 95 million. Uh, yeah. That was, you, you mentioned that was in a, a testimony of mine. I'm, I'll be honest, I don't recall that. I'm um, trying to I, I have ma a report, make sure, that, make yeah. sure they're, they're, they're two different things. One, one is our, our federal grant funding, and then one right. is our, you know, the ARP funding. Okay, so there yeah. are two different, yeah, the ARP is totally different, you know, that's at the governor's discretion. Right. And then this Infrastructure Jobs Act funding that, that came out, Guam was awarded $95 million in the, for five years for highway. And that's because every time somebody mentions infrastructure, I'm thinking of the Infrastructure Jobs Act. Mm -hmm. And it clearly states here and in your testimony saying that. So I just want to clarify that maybe. Um, we can, uh, I'll, I'll yeah, show you what I have. Yeah, if you don't mind, I, I, I don't recall that, but I, I'm going to have to get back to you on that, Senator. Okay, because no. I do realize that Public um, Works receives, um, DPW receives many types of grants from the federal government. I understand that from mm -hmm. different areas, but this particular one, I just don't want to confuse it. You know, people are saying that, because I do know that testimony you said you can't use it, so I think, uh, Lester, you have something you want to yeah. add into that? Are you familiar with the Infrastructure Jobs Act? Uh, yes, um, I think you're correct, Senator. Um, there's the FHWA funding that we're all very familiar with that we've been receiving for decades. Um, then there's the Infrastructure um, Jobs Act fund, which is different from the American Rescue Plan. Right, three different types of funding. Yes. And I just wanted to make sure what we can use the funding on and, and I, I keep hearing that. I, I think FHWA funding is the only one that's restricted to numbered highways. FHW is the only one restricted to routed roads? Yeah. Correct. Okay. FHWA grant funding, yes. Right, I, I do know that, yeah, that's why. <laughs> okay, I'm definitely gonna check with you and I'll show you the testimony that you provided during that, that one. The other one was um, Mr. Byrne, 
we had a discussion on um, the. Sorry, Mr. Byrne is oh. not here. He had he had to attend to some urgent matter that came up. Uh, 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 sorry, I, I'm being blocked. I can't really see any of you guys out up there because I'm, you know, I have people and blocking my view. Okay, so if he's not here, then hopefully. Uh, oh, okay. Hmm. Wow. My all my questions came because of a testimony that he brought when he was we were in the committee of the whole. So. Uh, Lester, are we still um, anticipating to have a Medicaid shortfall um, of $21 million by the end of the year? Uh, I think uh, Congress hasn't made that decision just yet. Um, I did come across something um, that extends the FMAP um, until, I believe, March. So. We're not going to immediately go back to the 55-45 because the FMAP extension of, I think, 6.2% has been extended uh, through, I believe, March of 23. So uh, it's certainly not 8713, uh, and I'm hopeful that uh, the Medicaid uh, relief that we've been, um, you know, receiving uh, will continue, but it, it hasn't happened yet. But uh, you, you can't really say that. <laughs> okay, I know my time's up. I'll go for the second round. But Mr. Chair, if, if I may, uh, just a little bit different. Um, I re it's really important about the infrastructure jobs at which one we're talking about. If I could just show the, the uh, panel uh, my documentation here so they can clarify this money is either strictly for Federal Highways Fund, I mean, uh, routed roads or non-routed roads. I, I have it right. I'm going to come right up to show them real quick sure. in case anybody else has any questions because that infrastructure word has been coming out all morning. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Terry Reed. Senator Bloss. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning to the panel um, for being here. And thank you for being here. Um, I guess my very first question is this figure of uh, $5,157,000. Does anybody, can anybody up there explain to me how we arrived at that figure? Uh, Senator, the best I can tell you right now is there was a lot of discussion uh, during the passage of uh, Bill 105. Um, I think we had a spreadsheet that showed the different categories of fuel, we didn't touch aviation fuel, I remember that, and I, I think uh, it was the speaker who was leading the discussion on what it was uh, in the different categories and um, how uh, the different categories basically arrived at what it was that was uh, appropriated. Mm -hmm. And so the thought being, uh, they cumulatively added up to $10 million, so $5 million for a six-month relief, you know, seemed to be uh, an extremely uh, well-thought-out methodology. Um, and then the mass transit automotive surcharge, um, that money goes to uh, GRTA. Um, and I was just telling the, uh, the chairman here that this year's appropriation for GRTA from that fund source, the public transit fund, is uh, $215,000. So from that fund, $215,000, we're going to take 150000 for this? Or uh, essentially, you're going to replace it with general sure. fund funds. Yeah. Well, what we anticipated to collect in, in, in gas tax. Well, since we won't be collecting it, you're going to replace it. Well, well then, 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 then it goes to my, my, my second question. Because the way the bill is written is basically uh, you take this money from the general fund or fiscal year 2022 general fund excess. Can you, again, repeat where, where, where you would prefer that this language or that uh, you, we get this money from? Page three, September, CRER, 
Okay. Issued in October. Okay, so so, but that page three is that excess 2023 or excess 2022? Okay. 22, sir. All right. Um, then it kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm a little leery here, or uh, on um, line 10, page one. The governor shall use her transfer authority if such sum is not available to fulfill the intent of this act. Um, okay. Oh, I, I don't understand this. So we're, we want to use excess, but if that's not available, then we can use the transfer authority. Uh, I think uh, the earlier discussion uh, with the speaker was um, to strike the general fund, and I said I, don't, I was okay with striking the language beginning on line 10. So it really boils down to one fund source. Okay, I mean, that's why I'm, I'm looking here. I'm like, okay, um, why wouldn't we have enough in that one funding source that we would need for her to do this? But then also, I'm just more intrigued. Um, basically, the administrator is, is looking at being able to be author or the authorization to tap into the excess funds. From 22, yes. Yeah. Okay. I find that interesting because then when we were talking about another bill, I mean, another law previously passed by this body, when I brought up the question as to where did you get the authority to be able to tap into this, I was told you don't need the authority to get to tap into it. And now we're looking for the authority to tap into it. So I'm wondering. We didn't need the authority, you didn't need the authority to tap into the funding. Why should we even be here to do this? Uh, I just, you know, it's good in, it's good in February but, or January, but it's not good in December. I'm not familiar with what I think, you're talking well, about. I'm, I'm talking about the LEAP program, Mr. Carlson. I, the what? The LEAP program, the $25 million that we gave, authorized you to use. Okay. The language was specific in the law, and then uh, we went ahead and used the excess when I said, when I asked who gave you the permission to do that. Well, you actually passed it in law, sir. No, we passed the, well, let, well let's, let's be relevant. We'll stay, we'll stay germane to this conversation, okay? That's, that's, that's the pass. I, I, I'm, you know, I'm not... I am not saying that we shouldn't do this, okay? If, if we've got the revenues and we've got the ability to do this, we should. We should give it back to the people, and I'm, okay? okay. Um, but, you know, you know, along those lines, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at this because we want to give tax relief for about five months, We've got a up to figure. Um, I don't recall what the gas prices were back at the time when we first passed this. Um, do you recall? Or is it somewhere in the same area? I, mean, I know was, that the gas tax was based on the percentage of what the current price is, right? No, it's per gallon. It's per gallon, but per gallon based on what the price is per gallon that Correct. they bought it, right? Okay, yeah. so. I'm just wondering whether this was, you know, the, the price of gas when this thing, when, if this were to pass, to be implemented, is the price of gas then much higher or much lower than what it was, how we come, came up with the formula for the first, first go around? I recall it being well over $5 when the first round started. Okay. Um, so we may, and then the, 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 I'm, I, I see there that the, the, the language says up to, so this is not necessarily a set figure. So after five months, if the price of gas was lower, but then we, uh, we waived the gas tax to even lower, we may not have to expend all of this. I'm just wondering how, you know, I know we're trying to correlate the amount that we anticipate 
lost, I got it, and the amount that we anticipate that we should have gained. Okay? So I'll, I'll explain that later on. Okay. Thank you. And congratulations to your wife. Thank you, Senator Bloss. Senator Talati, Senator St. Augustine. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> I'm just trying to understand all the questions that are being posed on the, on the bill. On the bill, very specifically, it's just to almost mirror what happened earlier that we passed, and nothing else. And as everybody starts thinking about that, by not passing this, or by passing this, we're denying projects that won't happen at DPW. That's not, I don't think that's the correct answer. That's a, that should be a correct statement. It all, all this you bill is doing is that whatever is appropriate to DPW, if we pass the moratorium, and I think, uh, Mr. Carlson, Lester, you brought it up that maybe we just need to change in section two and identify as an appropriation of the 5,157,000, am I correct, Lester? And if we, if we change the, make the amendment, and identify that um, the amount of 500, 5,157,000 is hereby appropriated from fiscal year 2022 general fund revenues collected in excess or adopted levels to cover the financial impact of the gas tax relief. This appropriation shall be allocated as follows, 5 million to Department of Public Works, 157,000 to Guam Regional Transfer Authority. That would meet the what you had recommended, I, if I'm correct, on your testimony and what you've stated so far this morning, correct? Uh, with one minor uh, change, the amount for GRTA from the Public Transit Fund, which is the- 157? Yeah, it's, you actually gave them 215, so they're, they'll be short $58,000. So the, it's, it's, it's not five million then to DPW be less to make sure the GRT is covered, correct? Okay, we'll make the, we'll make the numbers adjustment, but yeah. that will meet that, that appropriation because yeah. all it's doing is changing the source of funding. It's not denying any road projects, if I'm correct. Maybe DPW can answer that. You, no, but you're right. Um, Again, once I get my head screwed on right this morning, I understand that you're not gonna be collecting the tax, but in lieu of that tax, you're gonna take general fund money, make Mr. Areola whole, make GRTA whole. No, nothing will be delayed. That's, that's, that's contingent upon the FY23 funding because you've made them whole. That's correct. So in other words, if this bill doesn't pass, then they'll, mobile and everybody else can raise their, ta their, their gas prices back up to where where they were. They're very fast at doing that. Oh yes, they're very fast. They'll do it within hours. But I, I'm just trying to stress the point is that as many of you have said, oh, it's a few it's only a few cents. <laughs> takes a penny to reach a dollar, it takes a dollar to reach a million. So that's all this bill is about. It's making ensuring that the prices stay low. And if we can get lower, great. If the global market goes down, great. If it doesn't, at least there's some, some sort of relief. Thank you, Mr. Lester. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have nothing else. Thank you, Senator St. Augustine. This completes round one. Uh, for round two, in order to keep the order mixed up so we're not going to the same people at the same time, I'm going to start in the middle row and then go to the back row and then end on the front row for round two. Senator Perez, you're recognized. Senator Shelton. Senator Brown. I don't have any questions, but I do want to make a comment. I mean, I think we realize that uh, the gas companies on Guam are very quick to raise their rates, and it's inevitable that they're probably going to do it again. Um, but I think the time's also going to come. We're going to have to wrestle with the reality that we're either not going to fund these projects in the future when there's not an alternate source of general fund money uh, because the demands and needs of the Department of Public Works certainly are quite vast, and we don't appropriate enough as it is to address all the things that they need to do. So I think we need to recognize that. I mean, we can, while we have the additional revenue, certainly uh, reinvest that back into the public to offset uh, the increased rates that we're receiving throughout. I mean, goodness, grocery shopping, gas, power, I mean, the list goes on. But at some point, we're gonna have to wrestle with whether or not we're gonna put, put this back in place uh, because they, they do raise their rates and we don't know how they raise them. They raise them up and they raise them down and, and 
um, you know, they have a little justification, but they do it and they all are so well synchronized in how they continue to address the, the gas prices on Guam. So I think that's a reality we're going to have to, to come to terms with again at some point. Uh, and I think that needs to be noted. I mean, there's no, there's no free meal and there's no free giveaway at some point. Uh, the bills are going to have to be paid or we simply have to forego having the funds to get the service and the improvements uh, and enhancements we need. And I think we all recognize that uh, improving our roadway system is important. But I do want to make one comment since the director of DPW is here. I did notice that the uh, main routed roads are being used as parking again. And I don't know if you've given authorization or are, are private businesses just choosing to start blocking the highway for vehicles to be parked because I know with your agreement with Federal Highway that's prohibited and grounds for Federal Highway to pull funding to Guam. So I just wanted to ask you if that's something you've been authorizing or are these businesses illegally blocking the road uh, when they have certain for events. For parking lots? For parking, um, yes. Clarify that, I'm sorry. I've seen what, it on Route 4, I've seen it uh, on Main Marine Drive in, in recent weeks in the evening with no proper notice to um, motorists that these lanes are being blocked off. And again, I don't know what authority they have because you don't have the authority to block mm -hmm. the highways. I mean, you could do it for repairs and things of that nature, but not for parking. So the just only one know. we had was, th that I recall, was sev several, many months ago, actually. Uh, there was a business in East Agania that um, received a highway encroachment for additional parking, and that was, that just turned out all wrong, and so we haven't done it ever since. We just said, that is not happening again. Well, next time I see it, I'll take a picture and send Please it do. to you. But if you can let people know, I mean, I don't want to jeopardize federal highway funding to Guam, and, and that's yeah. not the intended person, you know, especially on the main highways. I understand village Marine you know, Drive. secondary roads yeah. that the mayors have some jurisdiction over that. Uh, but, you know, our main routed highways, that pra I noticed that practice coming back into place. Thank you. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Brown. Senator Tidegley. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for mixing it up a bit. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Bringing fairness to the body, thank you. Um, Lester, um, I've noticed the, well, has anybody from BBMR or even DOA did an analysis of how much money was there a savings for an individual during this whole, the first time this uh, gas, the gas act uh, came into play? Um, I, I, I mentioned this before, and I'll say it again, because once you guys entertain the first measure, uh, gas prices were rolled back um, like that day. And then maybe two weeks later, it went down again. Uh, but was, was that because of the, da uh, not, not the, the bill, one. or was it because of? Not the second one. So. Not the um, second one. Ever since, ever since this body, uh, you know, uh, did this very much appreciative um, uh, act for the people of Guam, their, the gas prices seem to continually go down. Like, what, this week it went but down. But you can't attribute it to the, um, the, the first, first one, yes. Yeah. Okay, you said that the, it went down twice. So the first oh. time it went down, right? And, and you're attributing that to the gas tax? Oh, yes. Okay, yes, and, yes. and you have an, uh, data and analysis showing that amount of money that was actually saved at the pump? Yes. You have that data analysis. It, it okay, was, so was, the second time it went down, it wasn't because of the job stacked at, okay? And then you're saying it keeps going down. It went down this week or last week. And it has nothing to do with the job. <laughs> okay, it has nothing to do with that as well, yeah, right? Yeah. Can you tell me about how much does a person save at the gas tank oh, because I, of this? Senator, I, I, per gallon, I, I, I couldn't tell you um, uh, what anybody else does. I could tell you that uh, every other every other time I go to the gas station, uh, instead of getting premium, I'll get regular. Yeah, it's, you're, it's, it's same with cents, me. It's forty cents a gallon cheaper. Yep, I, same with me. But there's yeah. nothing that you have to show how much savings uh, we're actually getting. Okay. No, it, it varies. The other, um, thank you. And uh, the CRER report is out usually by the 21st of every month, uh, so I'm anticipating for November to come in for the CRER report. Um, have you kind of took a little glance at it, or 
kind of estimated what we're looking at as far as any kind of um, excess revenue in that? I know we had seven million in October, the end of October. Um, and is this normal that it, it goes up a little bit, like October, November? No, no okay. November is November's a, actually a lousy month for collections. Uh -huh. uh, but what I can share is that uh, you'll see a very, at a minimum, similar uh, collections above what we anticipated for November, even though November is notoriously a weak uh, month for collections. But that's not attributing to the seven million that was already? Nope. And so it's gonna be um, something above seven million then? At a minimum, it'll be that level. It'll stay at seven million? No. At a minimum, the same uh, November by itself. Will go up to? Will at least equal what we did in October. Okay, so about 14 million by the end of November is what you're anticipating. Where's my napkin? Yeah, the back of the napkin, yeah. Oh, the back of the napkin. Oh, no, I totally understand that. <laughs> He's kidding. Mr. Senator Gell's always prepared. <laughs> Gives him a napkin. Um, Has the administration exhausted uh, their efforts in, uh, to, to determine whether ARP funding can be used for this bill instead of using excess revenue? Mr. Carlson? Uh, I know we extensively looked at the GPA thing and um, that was a definite no. It was a definite no. So the possibility of even the governor using ARP funding for this, uh, this bill is, is doable. Then can, I know that uh, the I, GPA I, one is quite big. It's at 20, I, what is it, 25 million? Yeah, but, yeah, but this one is what, 5 million plus? Yeah, but the eligibility for the GPA, um, it wasn't COVID related. So that's how come uh, we cannot use ARP money for the GPA relief. And we, we, you know, we, we did our research, we did our homework. Okay, but you can do it for this bill. I didn't look. So it is a possibility then, right? Um, I, we're here in session. Uh, the thing is gonna I expire. We have a solution. If I come back and I tell you no, did we miss the boat? Maybe. Well, there's no reason why we can't have two op opportunities to use funding from ARP, which, you know, has a timeline to it, unlike the general fund. You know, there's no timeline to that, but the ARP does have a timeline. So this may be an opportunity to utilize that funding there. And um, so I, I, I think that just having the two options is a good fit. You, you know, um, you can, if you put it in, along with, whatever else that we've discussed uh, and eliminated. Um, I, would, I would not even bother to recommend to the governor to entertain it. Entertain what? Using ARP when we have this. Okay, well, it definitely has the ability to be used for this, so I don't see why not. But I, I thank you so I, much for I your time. I don't think and the eligibility has been established, Senator. Well, it's definitely the people on Guam are still having a very difficult time. Our economy is not what it used to be. So we are in still, according to her, a state of emergency because of it. So I think that the funding is, could be used for this area because our people do need it. And that's what the money was meant for, for our people of Guam who are having a difficult time. And that's why we're here today, because of this bill, and even the power bill. So uh, I beg to differ on that, but I uh, appreciate your time, and uh, Merry Christmas to the two of you. Merry Thank Christmas. you. Thank you, Senator Tidy. We Senator Bloss. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Just to continue the conversation by my colleague, Mr. Carlson, how much does the governor still have in the ARP funding? 
Right? Uh, off the top of my head, um, 265 million? Okay. Um, I, sent, I sent the speaker a report uh, on the 5th. Sure. Um, and as of late, what were some of the fundings used in that, for that, with uh, that money? Um, I don't have the report with me, sir, um, but if you were to juxtapose it against previous reports by agency, you can see the variation. And where Reference to some of the, I guess, the publicized programs, the programs that they, they still got going on. Is that coming from ARP funding? Which one? Uh, your program, pen, program in Penila and your program in Solapi. Salapi, yes. Okay. And if I can recall, in some of the ads that were placed out, it's, you know, because, you know, the people are finding it difficult to continue, I mean, to, to make ends meet because of the inflation and stuff. And I'm just wondering what the difference is between that and this. Because she's saying it on the radio and on TV. That if you're having difficult times, you know, financial resources, I mean, you got nothing to do with COVID. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Bloss. Senator Talahi. Senator St. Augustine. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I almost got in the words of my colleague, Leary, those questions, but we'll that about that. Um, I just, um, I don't have any questions. I'll wait for the closing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator St. Augustine. Speaker Talahi. Thank you. Um, Mr. Carlson, can you confirm uh, the, the ending balance of the Guam Highway Fund for FY22 or your, on your CRER? I just don't have it in front of me. Uh, that would be in a special report, ma'am, and let me see if I brought that. Uh, I brought the CRER, ma'am. I did not bring the special fund report. Okay. Um, maybe Vanessa? I, too, don't have this um, special fund report. I have the CR, but I could pull it up real quick if you'd like. Uh, do you know the current tracking? Are we, uh, I want to know, yeah, if, if there was a shortfall, if it had to be filled with general funds and you did that automatically, if there was, or currently, right now, are we tracking on point for the Guam Highway Fund as what we appropriated, or are we short, or are we in excess? I can't answer that, ma'am. I don't have the report. If, if you could find the uh, special fund report for September that was provided in October, it'll give you an idea. All right, it looks, okay, my staff is telling me they see there's a shortfall of uh, almost $2 million from what was appropriated. Is that for FY22? In total. Okay. Uh, 1.9 million short FY22. All right. It's short. 1.9 million in September. Okay. 1.9. So, um, all right. Um, I guess I just I want to talk about the bill in general. I think we've confirmed that the funding sources, if, if taken from the excess of adopted levels in FY22, we have adequate to cover the 5 million estimated to make up for what might become short in the Guam Highway Fund so that DPW and, and uh, Mass Transit. Um, but I, you know, we've also heard that 
the shortfalls are normally covered anyways, right? Whether we pass the uh, authorization or the appropriation, those shortfalls are going to be covered because we've appropriated already to DPW. So we're not touching DPW's appropriation in any way. Uh, we're impacting our revenues, which may or may not result in a shortfall in the highway fund, right? So kind of early to tell right now for this fiscal year. But um, I have no objection to taking it from FY22 revenues just to be sure. Make sure we put that into the highway fund and it goes to those agencies. The, um, but as to the tax itself, um, you know, I, I'm in full support of this moratorium, right? It's to extend what was already in place for 180 days for another 180 days. We're told that this moratorium is going to expire based on the law that was passed in June 2022. This 100-day moratorium expires on December 18. So that's why we're discussing this bill today to add another 180-day moratorium. As you know, I had, I had previously tried to make it a permanent repeal of the liquid fuels tax and uh, I'm going to continue to consider that. But in the meantime, 180 day more term, I think uh, we should act on very quickly. And again, we do this, I think, for the same reasons we did it before. I think those reasons still apply. That, that um, 120 days, I mean, sorry, 180 days ago, the people of Guam were facing a, you know, rising um, cost of living. Uh, much of it beyond our control, including gas prices. And so we were trying to affect the part of gas prices in particular that was within our control, and that is the liquid fuels tax that we've added on. And just to confirm, that, that tax is, sorry, I had it all open here. It's here, 15 cents. Um, it's 15 cents through the local liquid fuels tax. There's also another four cents charged for the automotive surcharge and another four cents for the mass transit automotive surcharge. Altogether, that's a tax of an additional 23 cents per gallon for non-diesel fuel. And so we calculated that this, this, this bill and the permanent moratorium would have, um, they're meant to impact all gas consumers, not just those who are in a certain income level or making certain wages, but this was one of the reliefs passed by the Guam legislature for all of the people of Guam, particularly gas consumers. And we know that this affects individuals, families, students, and businesses and to a great degree. So um, we, we hope that the, the um, gas companies that came in included uh, SPPC, IP and E, and then mobile, they all came in and said that they would pass this savings on, of course, to the consumers, and so we expect that to be done again for the next 180 days if this law is passed. So um, I think it's incumbent upon us to, to make sure that we do that as speedily as possible. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Senator Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a, a quick question. The, um, I understand that we're extending the Gas Tax Relief Act, um, but the amount that we're specifying, doesn't the governor already have that authority to transfer that amount? Do we have to specify that we're giving her the authority to, to transfer $5 million? Or can she just do that on her own? And we're just, and then we can just adjust the bill to read that we are going to extend the gas, gas tax relief act for the next five months. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, Senator Nelson, we reserve the implementation of the governor's transfer authority um, until the end of the fiscal year. Oh, so you mean you're not transferring? We, we don't. You don't transfer throughout the year? No, ma'am. 
Okay, so didn't the end of fiscal year 22 end already? So does she have that transfer authority to do this? Not until September 30th. Of 2023? Yeah. Okay, so in the FY 2023 budget, um, we anticipated and Vanessa, you tell me if this is incorrect. It, we anticipated the gas, the impacts of the gas tax relief act that was that we did in FY 2022, right? For three months. For three months. Mm -hmm. So then we just need to cover two months. No, uh, we we the 180 days affects October, November, and December mm -hmm. of this fiscal year. So you straddle two fiscal years. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it expired in December. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, it's just not adding up. Why are you staring at me like that? <laughs> I, uh, the six month period, I, I think the speaker said December 18th. Yeah, so. Um, so it then is we're just looking for two months. Pardon me? So then we're just looking for two more months? No, no, we would extend it for another six months. So oh, it would go from, from now till May. Mm. Yeah, I still believe that this is an unnecessary provision to add for the, the, uh, the sum of 5.2 million. I think that, um, there's still that flexibility within the governor's authority to move that money, whether you do it in the month of September 30, 2023, or you do it at that time. Because in the budget bill, we did, or the law now, the 2023 law, we didn't restrict the governor on when she had the authority. True. We just gave her overall authority. So it's her decision when she wants to utilize that, her th that authority. Right now, Senator, we're almost three months into the fiscal year. Um, the budget that passed um, funded uh, agencies to the level that uh, the adopted revenues could support. So when we do the transfer, it's towards the end of the year when we know for sure and the books are closed uh, what agencies had overruns mm -hmm. uh, and what agencies had lapses mm -hmm. that don't have continuing appropriation authority uh, so that we take the lapses and transfer it over. That, that's the primary function of the governor's transfer. And it's only, um, it only pertains to general fund. So you're, you would be asking her to take $5 million cumulatively from general fund funded agencies in December, and it would probably be detrimental to their operations because uh, 5 million was taken three months into the fiscal year. So the time that you've been at BBMR that has always occurred that the governor transferred only in the month of September 30? No, no, no. Uh, only after the year ends. Mm -hmm. uh, and like Vince, uh, he doesn't, he only got general fund funding this year, last year, uh, because of uh, the need to be able to provide uh, his agency with funds that weren't going to be received from the Guam Highway Fund. Mm -hmm. But he traditionally doesn't get general fund funding. So, uh, you know. Okay. How are those bike lanes going, Mr. Ariola? We just had the tour of Guam yesterday. I'm I sorry? Mean, I said, how are those bike lanes coming along? That design I don't see is, any new bike I lanes. I got to push on that design because I promised you the, the, the design. Yeah. yeah, but we're going to do the central route. Okay. Because yeah. we just had the tour of Guam yesterday. I saw that. Right? Yes. Okay. So, you know, that's also another. Uh, revenue multiplier because we receive a lot of outside contestants outside of the island 
And so it would behoove us as a government body to also ensure that we Never are lanes. Um, Everyone's asking for, for lanes. Revenue source. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Nelson. Senator Torres. Senator Duenas. Jesus Masi, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I can never resist an opportunity to use my favorite uncle's, Uncle Barney's statement, now we're cooking with gas. <laughs> I think, the, um, I think the, uh, the, the questioning is now, at least uh, as I close with a few comments, the questioning has allowed us to understand that it really should be the priority of using excess revenues fiscal year 22. And uh, for the many reasons, as, as uh, uh, what do you call that, Lester and I have gotten our wheels going here, <laughs> and what I was trying to do in the beginning is, is, is simply because it, it really is uh, truly account accountable and accountability that way. Uh, when we're, when we're going to tamper with the current fiscal year, um, what we're basically doing, and I, and, I, and I respect the fact that Lester and his team are waiting till the end of the fiscal year in order to make adjustments, because we really should rely on the budget that we passed and fiscal constraints to meet the obligations of our government. And I do agree also uh, with the proposal here that, that, that we move forward and continue to give relief to our people. But as we use the general fund for that, Mr. Chairman, uh, you know, it, going forward after we now identify, and as far as I'm concerned, I hope the amendments will pass to basically make sure it's exclusively the excess revenues of 22 is because we will then be anticipating the new budget after this six month lapses. We will already be having hearings and we will probably be going towards the summer whereby we'll end up debating next year's budget. And that's the appropriate time to be discussing that because that will be the coming year's uh, effect in terms of if we continue to provide this relief. We will now need to make general fund appropriations if we've identified these priorities for public works. Because they would have otherwise anticipated that they would be getting that revenue as a special fund via the taxes imposed that are no longer going to be there if it becomes something that we move forward on a permanent basis or most especially if we're saying possibly another extension that would affect the basically the tail end of this fiscal year going into the new fiscal year. So that should be debated when we're talking about general fund revenues upcoming and current general fund revenues should be allowed to be as static and as fluid as they, they are now for the purposes of operations. Uh, if it ends up bumping a priority that from prior, well, that's what this body has decided, that this priority is more important than some of the other priorities that we identified. And that's, that's what happens when we, uh, when we do these type of things and appropriate in this manner. I go back to, once again, the famous appropriation many, many years going on with the Tourist Attraction Fund. And I would ask BBMR, how does this affect the projects that are proposed? Which one comes in first? That's what gets funded. So that's essentially what we'll be doing here, Mr. Chairman, if we want to extend this relief. And I'm glad that we had uh, the debate and the comments that we did. And so now let's go forward and cook with gas. Sisters Masi. Thank you, Senator Duenas. This completes round two. Uh, we will dismiss the panel and recess until 2 p.m. for the third and final round. Well, we'll first recess and dismiss the panel.
Ready? Okay, the Committee of the Whole is back in order. We are on round three for amendments and final comments on Bill 358-36. The first amendment we received speaker from Speaker Therese Terlahi to line five, page one. We're, we're on the third round for amendments, but we begin first with the amendments that were proffered, and then we'll allow anyone to make comments. Speaker Talahi, you're recognized. Line five, page one on your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As I said earlier, I support repealing the liquid fuel tax and uh, had introduced a measure to do that. Um, the measure that was passed after that was a, a measure to put a 180-day moratorium on the liquid fuel tax. I supported that. That was passed in June. It expires on December 18. Uh, passage of this bill, particularly section one of the bill, would extend the moratorium for another 180 days. I am in full support of that. Uh, we've heard the savings that are going to be passed on to consumers, and every consumer, regardless of income level, will be able to avail of this savings in liquid fuels tax of 15 cents um, and on 15 cents tax plus a 4 cents surcharge for automotive and 4 cents surcharge for mass transit. That's 23 cents per gallon. And I believe that the moratorium has made an impact on consumers for the first 180 days and I believe that the conditions still exist that we should extend it for another 180 days. But there was a lot of discussion on the bill um, versus the original, it's been amended, to talk about how much money, if we pass a moratorium, is going to be reduced in the Guam Highway Fund. That's where this money goes. And so they've, uh, BBMR has estimated to be 5.2 million. And um, so I have no objection to putting that money into the Highway Fund that we know it may be short uh, based on our moratorium on the on the revenue however yeah my amendment would be to remove the words the general fund and or as a funding source for this five million and leave instead the fiscal year 2022 general fund revenues collected in excess of adopted levels this is over and over it was uh it you know the, the source that we have cited, that BBMR has cited, and that the testimony and the public hearing has confirmed is the reliable source. It will not affect any of our appropriations for this fiscal year if we take it out of excess funds from FY22. And we will still have excess funds after this bill is passed to accommodate energy credits that we are estimating in amounts of 25 million or more. So I support these measures to help the people of Guam. And uh, just I want to be very precise, if we can, about what the governor's authorized to use. So my amendment would limit the authorization to using excess 22 funds as opposed to general funds in general, which we have no idea how that will impact other agencies or um, whether she will be using her transfer authority or not, and that will impact other agencies. So that would be my amendment, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Speaker. On the amendment, Senator St. Augustine, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Throughout the uh, first and second round, 
the amended bill, the amended version of the bill that I that we submitted in our committee, identified authorization. And throughout the discussion, it was discussed that an appropriation was needed, not an authorization, because the, the effort was there for authorization. But an appropriation was identified as what is needed. And also, the issue of the transfer authority, that it'll be at the end of the year. That's not until next year. The moratorium is to happen now, not 12 months from now, or 10 months from now. And with that, I'd, I'd have to object to that. And I do have an amendment that would recognize those shortfalls. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator St. Augustine. On the amendment, On the amendment, Senator Duenas, you're recognized. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, and I, I am looking at both amendments as proposed and proffered, and I got to say that I have a similar reservation, simply because the discussion throughout the bill was to lockbox this into the fiscal year 22 excess revenues and to ensure that we eliminated both the general fund, which would be this fiscal year, as well as eliminating transfer authority. Now, I think in order to do that, we need to appropriate because there are other projects identified and other things identified with the prior year excess revenue. We need to be clear, I think, in this body that we're appropriating that revenue so that this anticipated shortfall in this fiscal year is covered specifically by that funding source. And the reason why I say that once again, Mr. Chairman, is that if we are authorizing or even appropriating in this fiscal year is, I think we need to do what we have did a few bills back and do it right, which would be a supplemental appropriation. Because basically what you're going to be doing there, if you tinker with this fiscal year and you know there will be a shortfall in special fund revenue because you've authorized the fact that that tax collection will not go on, that moratorium for six months, you know that that has a diminishing effect on the revenues coming in that have already been appropriated. So if you're going to do that, you need to bring out your spreadsheet once again and do it as a supplemental appropriation so that you're accounting for the funds. By appropriating the prior year anticipated excess revenue, you have basically, you're moving monies that, that, that were otherwise be excess revenues and you're appropriating them so that you are adequately accounting for it and you're not moving any revenues around. Now in the event, for some reason, audited revenues are come forward and there is a discussion on that discrepancy, then that's the time when you go in and you identify your current expenditures and you do it right through a supplemental appropriation, which identifies you are now using general fund revenues to clearly subsidize. Now we know in our discussions, Mr. Chairman, that we've had this discussion that shortfalls and special funds are currently being covered. But that's a matter of course in terms of this a fiscal year that you have to because you have those obligations, say for example customs or some of these other things that are identified. You're not going to not fund those positions and, and, and that obligation, but when you specifically have identified the extension of a program, you have specifically said you're going to do that benefit, then you must identify a funding source. And like I said, if we are going to stay within the current year's funding source or we are not going to get rid of the general fund and the transfer authority of the governor, we've got to have a solid funding source. So I, I think the subsequent amendment is more properly put together. So that's my comments. On point the of order, Mr. Chair, to talk about a subsequent amendment is completely out of order at this point. I'm making one amendment here. I'm proposing one amendment to the current language of the bill. I'm not adding this language to the bill about authorization. I'm amending the current bill. That's all. 
to change general fund, to remove those words, and to leave the revenues in excess. We can talk about future amendments at future times. Otherwise, Mr. Chair, if you want to change the order of how you called us, you, you know, I, that could have been done as well. But right now we're on just one amendment to remove two words to the current bill. Not, and the current bill is the one that says authorization. And so I'm remove, that's my proposal. At, that's all, the only proposal on the table at this point. Fine, Mr. No, Mr. Chairman, I withdraw my comments about a future amendment to be proffered, but then I sustain the objection on the current amendment that's been proffered for the reason, for the simple reason of an authorization does seem to be appropriate when you're operating within a general fund revenue or when you're using funds that could be anticipated of transferring. But when you're being specific and going to an appropriation, you must identify a funding source. So therefore, I don't see that in this amendment. Therefore, I sustain the objection made by the chairman. Susan Masi. Thank you, Senator Duenas. Anyone else on the amendment? Senator Nelson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, while we were in the Committee of the Whole, we did inquire with um, BBMR that would removing the words general fund would hinder the ability to do so. And he said, or would that be okay? And he said, yeah, I suppose that would be okay because it still allows for the fiscal year 2022 general fund revenues um, uh, collected in excess. And then he did state that there's about $43 million in excess. And um, there was further inquiry whether this would impact any of the um, items that we placed in the public law, which is now the budget of 20 FY 2023, if this would impact any of the items that we placed under the excess revenues, and he said no. And so I guess I'm just a little perplexed uh, at the objection of removing the words from the general fund because when it says from the general fund, we're discussing general fund FY 2023, that interpretation. And really, if there's $43 million for fiscal year 2022 under general fund revenues collected in excess of the adopted levels, um, which means that there's $43 million to spend, or not $43 million to spend, but there's $43 million available, which would cover about the $5.2 million amount here. And it would further ensure that the budget that we just adopted would not be impacted for the general fund FY 2023. So I don't understand what the objection is, but we were given the approval from the panel that that would suffice. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Nelson. On the amendment. Anyone else on the amendment? If not, Senator Tala Speaker Talahi, you may close. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, the bill itself and this section started off with completely different language. It said, from any available funding source, the governor's authorized to spend up to $5 million to cover the impacts of our moratorium. And the impacts, and then the bill was amended by the committee to the current language that says the $5 million from the general fund and or the FY22 general fund excess revenues. And we all agree that it should be the excess revenues that should be spent. We all agree on that. The panel agreed on that. So I am merely amending the bill to reflect that we don't want the money coming out of the general fund generally. We want it coming out of the FY22 excess revenues where we know and we have confirmed that there is money available. That's the only amendment being made here. It's to the current language of the bill. And um, 
as the previous speaker said, this was discussed. Just like when I asked them, uh, anyways, this is exactly what we asked and was confirmed and was discussed. This makes the current bill better in its current form. Notwithstanding any future amendments, in the current form of the bill, this would make it better, it would make it more precise, and it would make it more in line with what I think everybody intends, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. On the amendment, there's been an objection. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Motion fails. The next amendment, this is the last amendment we have. And just for the record, uh, these amendments were called in order in which they were received. Senator St. Augustine, you are recognized on your amendment to line five, page one. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You'll find that um, as the bill was introduced and amended, and what was discussed in the Committee of the Whole is to amend the, on Section 2, from authorization to appropriation, the amount of $5 million, and to strike out the Magahagan Guan is authorized to spend up to the sum of no more than that struck out. The amount of $5,215,800 $215, is hereby appropriate on fiscal year and striking out general fund fiscal year 2022 general fund revenues collected in excess of adopted levels to cover the financial impact of the gas tax relief this appropriation shall be allocated as follows five million dollars to the department of public works 215 823 dollars to the guam regional transit authority and and to strike out also the the magahagan guam shall have shall use our transfer authority if such sum is not available, full extent. As we listen to the Committee of the Whole, that's what they stated at the end. And that's my amendment, to appropriate, because we originally started with an authorization, believing that the authorization would have been appropriate. But no, an appropriation will be a, will be a proper statement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator St. Augustine, on the amendment. Senator Duenas, you're recognized. Jesus Masi, Mr. Chairman, and now it's appropriate to speak on this amendment. So the reason why I support the amendment is for the same points that I made earlier. Many, many legislatures have gotten themselves in trouble by passing authorizations without appropriation. If you were going to do that forever and ever and ever, then we can load another Christmas tree in here to the legislature and make it as tall as the roof and put all of our favorite things on that tree. But that tree would go up in flames when you don't realize the revenue that you've authorized. The reason why the authorization language, I believe, was put in by the chairman to in the beginning was there were multiple funding sources. It was anticipated sort of a hodgepodge, you know, pick your pot of money and, you know, it will be accounted for, of course. Like every other appropriation or authorization is accounted for, it comes out in the wash. It comes out in the audit. When the audit of how funds were used, and that's where you determine whether or not you have a surplus or you have a deficit, our CRERs are a tracking a snapshot audit, if you will, on a monthly basis. But here, since we've insisted that we want to be specific, which is a good idea for accounting, for accountability, for transparency, is to identify that fiscal year 2022 revenue source. Because as we know, that also has a lot of Christmas trees or presents on that Christmas tree. And so you need this appropriation because it may bump a present. And the idea of understanding that is many of those appropriations, as you know, Mr. Chair, were made with anticipation as we did the 2023 budget. But many of those projects and things that were identified as well have long-term 
requirements for seeking those infrastructure opportunities, for speak, seeking those additional resources for, for perhaps specialists under, under medical programs, for seeking procurement for other items. And so now that we've appropriated this and it's identified and we know that it has to come from that funding source, those other projects, should they anticipate some shortfalls within the fiscal year, then you can go in and fix that appropriation in the appropriate time within that fiscal year. But this is good fiscal management. This is a good way to do this so that you do not create a situation within your current fiscal year where you need to shuffle monies around because you've identified an authorization. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Duane. You're on the amendment. Senator Nelson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a question for the sponsor. Uh, proffering the amendment, what is the, um, what is the premise of splitting the, first we had 5.157 uh, million, now, we're ha now we have 5.215823, so that's, hmm. So there's a difference there by about, 40,000, or no, 60,000. And then now we move further down to the amendment. There is the um, separate provision that's now stating that only 5 million will go to DPW, and the remainder, which is 215,823, going to GRTA. Where did he, um, what was the premise for that? Is there like a formula, or we just decided that we're just going to? separate the appropriation that way. Does the sponsor yield? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, um, the amount comes from the budget. That was identified that that's where the shortfall will be, to match the budget and what was anticipated that they would receive. And by putting the moratorium, that's the uh, identified funding short. This is matching exactly what's in the budget. That doesn't make sense. Um, the budget says five million, five point two. We identified that when this bill was originally started early this year. It was five point one five seven. In twenty twenty two, it is now impacting twenty twenty three. That's the difference, and we are now in FY twenty twenty three. Right, so now we're adding $215,823 to Guam Regional Transit Authority. So are we saying that that's exactly how much is impacted from GRTA? That's correct. <sighs> okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Nelson. I believe if I may add, I recall the testimony from the, Mr. Carlson on the panel was something to the effect of splitting it some to DPW and then the remainder to Regional Transit Authority. And I believe he stated that the actual amount was uh, 215. Anyone else on the uh, amendment? On the amendment, Speaker Talahi, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This amendment does several things, so if I could take them one by one. Changing the amount, I have um, no issue with. Um, I don't know where the amount came from, but I'm assuming consulting with OFB and BBMR, this is accurate. So changing it to an appropriation is OK. But the goal is to replace the revenue that we are losing through a moratorium. So by not collecting liquid fuels taxes, 
we are reducing the revenue that's coming into the Guam Highway Fund. We're not reducing the revenue to the Department of Public Works or the Guam Regional Transit Authority. In fact, we've already appropriated this five million to DPW and 215,000 to regional transit in our budget. We've given them this appropriation level. So they should get this money through various sources. It's supposed to come from the highway fund. So we're, if we're making the highway fund short and we want to replenish the highway fund, I have no objection to doing that. But I, I don't think it's wise of us to make another appropriation to DPW and Regi Regional Transit Authority on top of the existing appropriation. That exists. It's, we haven't touched it by this bill at all. What we're touching is our revenue. And we record this revenue in the Guam Highway Fund revenue projection. That's what we're affecting by passing another moratorium. So for that reason, I'm, I'm suggesting another amendment, an amendment to the amendment that instead of, we know that the money from the highway fund goes to the two agencies described, but that, that appropriation exists, so they will get that money. Uh, I'm, my amendment is to change uh, the amendment to say is hereby appropriated to the Guam Highway Fund. In other words, instead of funding the highway fund with the liquid fuels tax, we're funding it through the general fund now because we put a moratorium on the liquid fuels tax. So we're putting that money into the general fund so that it will go wherever it's supposed to go for the highway fund, wherever we've previously allocated out of the highway fund to go. And these are two of those. I'm not sure if these are all, but these are definitely two of those. And uh, if we put the money into the general, from the general fund into the highway fund, it will go to these agencies as was already spelled out in the budget bill. And by doing, uh, making this amendment, we won't be double appropriating for those agencies. That's what I don't think we needed to do according to all the testimony. And the other thing is, this is exactly the mechanism that they testified that they do. If they don't have enough in the Guam Highway Fund, they cover it through whatever other authorities they have, general fund normally, right? They said the general fund is obligated to cover special fund shortfalls. And so we are just putting that in writing by this bill, if, if amended, as I'm suggesting, that we're gonna put in writing that the general fund is going to cover any shortfall in the Guam Highway Fund that has already been appropriated to the two agencies. So that's my amendment, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Speaker. There has been an amendment to the amendment. On the amendment to the amendment. Senator St. Augustine, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. When we talk about the budget bill, the budget bill is based on projection. There was no discussion about a moratorium to happen in 2023. The budget bill was passed two months, three months ago. Now we're talking about a moratorium. Now the projection for DPW and Guam Regional Transit will be impacted based on what they're supposed to collect if the moratorium goes into effect. Guam Highway works for, is under the supervision, if I'm correct, of DPW. So I can't see why we're gonna give it to Guam Highway. I understand her intent, the author's intent, but I still support we give it to DPW and Guam Regional Transit. And it's not a double appropriation because it's a specific to cover what's not collected in the moratorium. Thank you. Thank you, Senator San Augustine. Anyone else on the amendment to the amendment? Senator Duenas, you're recognized. You know, I concur with the retiring speaker for the fundamental purpose of, yes, for many discussions that we continue to have over the CRER and everything else on the balancing and levelizing of shortfalls, 
those are unanticipated shortfalls because you've adopted the revenues for all of those special funds. That's based on tracking. That's based on what comes in. We're deliberately doing this, Mr. Chairman. We're deliberately going in and extending this moratorium, which means it needs to be funded. You're not basing yourself on collections and tracking. You're basing yourself on you're passing a law that is now going to affect and create a shortfall in the budget that you adopted. That requires an appropriation. That is not like just tracking a fund. Like the BBMR director said, it's actually tracking now in the positive on the tap because tourism is increasing. So you don't need to appropriate that. You track that. You don't need to fund it anymore because it's no longer falling short of what you adopted. So I see the original amendment as intact doing exactly that, going to what the budget intended that funding source to go to. But to, it's apples and oranges or, or, or mangoes and bananas, Mr. Chairman, to say that when we normally have already anticipated and understand that general fund revenues will take care of shortfalls, yes, in a fiscal year projection that you've put forward and you're hoping for the best, preparing for the worst, but not when you're deliberately passing a piece of legislation that creates a shortfall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Duenas. Senator Tidegui. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I do have a question to the author of um, this amendment because, you know, as you, as you read this amendment by SSA on page one, line five, it Senator appropriates- Senator Tidegui, oh, we are on the amendment to the amendment. Okay, and that amendment to the amendment was to change? It's by uh, Speaker Terlahi. Okay, and that is on, okay, hold on. That's, because there are two amendments here from speakers, so is that the? Uh, it's the longer one. Okay. <laughs> the one with all the double lines on it, right? Correct. Correct, okay. I just have a question with regards to the amendment to the, it is hereby appropriated, okay, okay, no, no, that's what my concern was. The word um, allocated on the original amendment, this appropriation shall be allocated as follows. I mean, the way I say it, it, it should be appropriated. So I, I guess this amendment to the amendment is actually correcting that, so it is hereby appropriated from the fisc uh, fiscal year 2020 collected nexus adopted levels to the Guam. No, that's actually correct because we are appropriating. We're not allocating uh, like the original amendment is. We're appropriating. So, yeah, no, it's in order. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator Tidegui. The original amendment also says appropriated on it. Um, the original amendment, that's what I was <laughs> speaking on, actually, Mr. Chair, if I may. Um, it has where the double line, the appropriation shall be allocated as follows. It's quite different when you say allocated versus appropriation directly to. So that's, that was my concern and actually the speaker's amendment to the amendment actually corrects that and it clearly says appropriate. Anyone else on the amendment to the amendment? If there's no one else, Senator St. Augustine, you may close, uh, so, excuse me. I'm getting confused. Madam Speaker, you may close. Thank you. And, um, you know, I know we don't have our FY23 budget in front of us. However, the department, the, the appropriation to the Department of Public Works does not come from the liquid fuels tax. So lowering the liquid fuels tax does not necessarily lower, it doesn't affect the appropriation to the Department of Public Works. The appropriation to the Department of Public Works specifically comes from, it says, summary of appropriation funding sources, Guam Highway Fund, and the Guam Educational Facilities Fund. So by adding another appropriation in this law, in this bill, to the Department of Public Works, we're adding on to its current appropriation in the FY23 budget. So in addition to what we gave them, 
we're giving them an additional five million. I don't think that's our intent. If we're trying to make up for a shortfall, it's obvious the shortfall is, the potential shortfall is going to be to the Guam Highway Fund. And if, if we make up for that shortfall to the Guam Highway Fund, the, the other appropriations are going to be taken care of. There may be others from the Guam Highway Fund. And that's what we need to do, is just make the Guam Highway Fund whole, because we are reducing the Guam Highway Fund intentionally by a moratorium, and we just need to make it whole again. And so yes, we, we all intend that the money goes to where we had originally appropriated it goes, but unless we're gonna go into our budget and decrease the appropriations from the Highway Fund by, by this amount, and then reappropriate it from the general fund, that would be balanced. But if we don't do that, it's, it's not balanced. It's, it's giving them in addition to the current appropriations. And all we're trying to do is make them whole uh, by the amount we're not collecting in liquid fuels. And so we just need to put that money from the general fund or whatever source we decided, and we've decided the 2022 excess general fund put that into the highway fund and we have taken care of it. And we have done this for other shortfalls and special funds where we fund them instead from the general fund. But um, so yeah, so for this particular amendment, this is, this is why we discuss the Guam Highway Fund shortfall, that there really is a definite shortfall there and that this bill, if passed, putting a moratorium on liquid fuels is going to cr exacerbate a shortfall on the Guam Highway Fund. And every agency that gets its money from the Guam Highway Fund. So again, I don't think we want to double appropriate to DPW or regional transit. I think putting the money to the Guam Highway Fund is more precise. It's where the shortfall from liquid fuels. There's no statute that says liquid fuels tax is going to the Guam Highway Fund. It says the Guam Highway Fund is going, I mean, sorry, there's no statute that says liquid fuels tax is going to DPW. It's the Guam Highway Fund that's going to DPW. It's a Guam Highway Fund we need to restore. It's a Guam Highway Fund that we are impacting by this bill. And instead of leaving it to the administration to cover the shortfall in the fund, we are trying to cover the shortfall in the fund um, by this act. And I support this act. And I just, I just want to ensure that we don't double appropriate it and that we, we continue uh, with the good intentions in this bill and um, consistent with the testimony and consistent with, with all um, what we're trying to do here and not, not exceed <laughs> anything that we have not even discussed and that's like adding double appropriations or anything else like that. So if we're trying to make up for the shortfall from the liquor fuels tax, I think if we put it into the Guam Highway Fund, we're going to be good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I ask my colleagues for their reasonable consideration and to please support this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. On the amendment, I believe uh, there was an objection. Was there, Senator St. Augustine, did you object? Let's take a moment's recess.
We are back from recess. So again, we are on the amendment to the amendment. Are there any objections? No objections, motion passes. So we are now on the amendment by Senator St. Augustine as amended. Anyone on the amendment? I think I was, I had the floor at that moment. So yeah, just to conclude, yes, I, I, I support this amendment wholeheartedly. It, it really makes the bill um, fine-tuned, accurate, and it's um, no, no um, inadvertent consequences to any of the agencies that are funded from the liquid fuels tax by us and our moratorium. Uh, and again, I support the moratorium for 180 days or longer, but for sure for 180 days. I support the, the 23 cents tax savings that the consumers are going to receive. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Speaker. On the amendment, as amended, there's no one else. Senator St. Augustine, you may close. On the amendment, as amended, are there any objections? Seeing none, motion carries. Senator Torres, you're recognized. Senator Duenas. Senator Perez. I'm sorry, we're on the bill now. This is for closing on the bill. Senator Shelton. Senator Brown. Senator Tidegui. Senator Bloss. Senator St. Augustine, you may close. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That being stated, um, I'd like to just uh, ask my, uh, my colleagues for their affirmative support for the hardworking men and women of Guam. And with that, Mr. Chair, I move to rise from the Committee of the Whole with the recommendation that Bill 358-36 as amended by the Committee on General Government Operation and Housing and further amended in the Committee of the Whole be placed on the third reading file. On that motion, are there any objections? Seeing none, motion carries. We'll take a moment's recess. Back from recess and from the Committee of the Whole. Senator St. Augustine, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I wish to report back to the body after the deliberation of Bill 358-36-COR as amended by the Committee on General Government Operation Appropriation Housing and further amended in the Committee of the Whole with recommendation of the Committee of the Whole to place on the third reading file. On that motion to accept the recommendations of the Committee of the Whole to place Bill 358-36-COR to the third reading is there, as amended. As there, is there any objection? Seeing no objection, motion carries. We're now on Bill number 291-36-LS on the second reading file, and um, we will... Madam Speaker, motion to recess until 2.30. 2.30. Motion to recess until 2.30 p.m. Is there any objection? Seeing no objection, motion carries. We're recess until 2.30 p.m. <laughs> 